this video we're going to be looking at a Sony 400 disc DVD CD changer. This one is a model number. It's hard to see it down there. My camera is having a tough time focusing on it because of the contrast. It's a DVP CX995V and it's got a couple problems. Let's take a look at it. So tonight I'm going to take a look at this monster uh, 400 disc changer. And it's doing some weird things. There's no discs in it. Listen to it. Now I've already removed the screw, so we'll just take the top off this thing and see what is going on. It appears to be hunting for a disc, but there's no discs in it. I have a feeling we should get some entertainment down here. I have cats that are making themselves right at home. Not only is it doing this, but it won't stop unless I press the open button. As soon as I close it, even when there's no discs in it, it's just going to start this hunting. Okay, now it's going to go through all the discs and see if there's any discs in it. This time it's actually doing what it's supposed to. Now it's going to go back and forth, you see. So, I haven't got a clue what's wrong with this one yet. It's, it's, it's more than likely going to involve this optical sensor over here. Because that's what tells the unit if there's a disc in it or not. Now one of the other complaints that I got with this unit was the fellow was telling me that it's off by one. So if we look down here at the front, if I can get enough light in there so you can see. So here's our disc alignment. It tells me I'm on disc number one, but disc number one's actually over here. It's off by one. So that, that may be a clue as to what the problem is. Our disc alignment is, there's optical sensors in here. There's a light source here and there's optical sensors down below. And here's the adjustment. My camera focus there. There's this little screw down here. It looks like one of our wheels has fallen out, doesn't it? Probably why it's bumping along there. One of our wheels underneath this thing is uh, underneath the tray has come out. Um, anyway, let's take a look. Let's let's locate where that wheel goes first. Then I'll show you the adjustment. It's this screw here. This screw down here is what controls. Well, you can see it's loose. Holy smoke, it's loose. <laughs> there's a there's part of our problem right there. That screw's not tight. But I want to find out where this wheel goes first because. Uh, that uh, wheel that's just sitting there is not good. It's got to go back underneath the tray here. The wheel should go right here, underneath here. So it's easier said than done though because it's actually underneath the tray. So I'm going to try and work my uh, work my fingers in there without. I don't want to have to disassemble this any more than I have to to uh, get at this. I'm just going to try and work my fingers underneath there and see if I can get the. Uh, the roller back in place without having to disassemble this thing too much. So I can slip my fingers underneath here. I might be able to pry this thing up just enough that I can get, you can see it coming through here now, get underneath there. Turn it off because I don't want this thing trying to rotate with my fingers and I don't want to lose a finger underneath this thing, if you know what I mean. There's not, there's not a lot of room down here. I'm going to try and do this without unnecessarily disassembling the uh, mechanism. I'm getting close here. Okay, I apologize if I haven't had the camera off there a bit, but I was standing in front of the uh, lens so you couldn't see what I was doing, but I basically just worked this with 
using a pair of needle nose pliers I was able to fish the the, uh, the two tabs down and lock it into place. That should have my tray alignment back as far as the holding it mechanically. Let's turn the power back on here and we'll see how the uh, alignment goes on this and then adjust this disc. Position. So I'll open it up. If I move this, you'll see it moves. So I want to line up disc number one with the marking on the front here. And if I hit the disc eject button, it's a little pin that comes up. Yeah, we're on disc number one now. So I'm just going to tighten down this screw. That was actually quite loose. It's interesting. It's like they didn't tighten it at the factory. Okay, let's just see whether this thing will load the disc now. And I want to play disc number one, so I'm going to press the button and see whether it's going to actually do anything or whether it's going to sit and go back and forth. I'm still going to go back and forth. I have to do a little more research on this and see why it's doing that. It's got to, it's got to be something to do with this pickup. Maybe even this top side pickup is not lined up right. It's got an adjustment on it too. This plastic adjustment here, this adjusts the sensor on the bottom which reads the, uh, the, the coded, it's like the, it's like the five disc machine, it's a little more complex though, but there's a series of, there's a series of, uh, of, uh, of pulse trains basically as it's, as it's rotating, it can count the disc location, it counts it as a series of pulses. And that's how it knows where the discs are. This sensor here shines a beam of light that goes through the disc and is picked up by a photo sensor. And that's to tell it whether there's a disc in that position or not. And it's having a tough time reading it. It might be due to the amount of light that's shining down on here. But it was doing it with the cover on as well. So I don't think that's the case. So if we put the camera in night shot, we can actually see that this is an infrared LED that shines an infrared light beam. And this is what is detected by the disc detector and quite often what happens is if this light is too weak it won't count the disc and you'll get what we have happening here right so I think maybe our problem on this may be that this LED is has gotten weak so let's try and put a new one in it's just going to be a, a regular LED infrared LED like would be used on a um, remote control I think see I've got my camera in night shot so we can see this if I turn the night shot mode off on the camera we shouldn't be able to see it because on this camera you saw I'm sure the little filter move there and of course we don't see anything now you see and if I turn the night shot mode back on if I can find the button on here I can't see it I'm kind of just feeling for it where is that stupid button night shot right there okay if I turn on the night shot you'll see what happens here as the filter gets moved away see there's the filter cool huh It actually physically removes the infrared cut filter. So let's see if I can find another infrared LED and we'll try changing that and see whether that will fix the problem on this unit. See one of the things that makes me think that this uh, 
dial might be a bit weak is if I look at a remote control you can see how much brighter a remote control is so that's why I'm thinking this um, this LED may be a little weak so I'm gonna try and find one from an old remote control I have a helper in here tonight that's making some noise he's getting a little more bold and is spending a little more time here working with me in the shop content to play with a plastic bag and of course my other one here she's just she's just watching to see what's going on but I think there could be a bit of a scrap because they're having a staring contest at each other So I've got another infrared dialed here and get this one lined up here and into the board. Now, let's see how my uh, assistant here is getting in the way. Okay, we'll turn this thing on and see how this one looks for brightness compared to the other one. Of course, we won't see it until I turn off the uh, or turn on the night shot. I can find the button here. Okay, let's turn on the power on this thing. does tend to be sending out a bit of a signal. Let's just mount the, uh, the diffuser on it. Yeah, if we want to play it, I'll just, I just haven't figured out how this thing works yet, but uh, it does this a few times and then it will it'll load here after it, there it goes. It swings back and forth a few times to figure out where the discs are. And then it now loads, so I get this feeling that uh, we've solved the problem on this thing. It's reading. This is the DVD. It's in it this time. And there is the movie playing. If I want to go to the next disc, I just change it to DVD 3 and press play. It should stop it. Chuck the disc back in. And start playing the disc. So it looks like uh, what my problem on this unit, besides the, the obvious adjustment uh, problem for the We got a cat here that's chewing on a wire. I'm gonna chase it out of here. Besides it, uh, besides the obvious adjustment here that was out of adjustment for the uh, the uh, disc position, I changed out the infrared LED for the disc detection because it was just doing this, going back and forth. And after I changed the disc, well, as you can see, it's now ready to go. And if I press that one. It should start. Now I can sit down and, and watch this movie. I'll show you guys a few more times how this thing works. So, um, if I move the camera over a bit here so you can see. If you want to actually eject the disc on this thing, because these discs are so closely packed together, there's a button here that says disc eject. And when you press it, it actually puts the disc out about a millimeter. So you're able to grab 
the disc because when there's 400 discs put together it makes it pretty tough to do so once we've replaced once we've changed our disc again if I want to play it as you can see now maybe it doesn't show up so well on the camera but is it gonna focus is it gonna focus yes it's gonna focus okay so here's our alignment mark here for disc number one and it was off by one before and now as you can see my one lines up perfectly with the space before fixing this thing if you set it to disc number one and press the disc eject it would eject disc number 400 it was off by or it was, I guess it was disc number two it was off by one it was one off it was one this way so it, it would kick out number two so anyway that's fixed I want to play the disc I just pick the disc I want to play press play it's gonna search it and go back and then swing right around load disc number one this is an audio CD this time takes a few seconds to figure out that it's an audio CD has to switch lasers and stuff right because it's a CDR so there the audio disc is playing but when I go to disc number two I just turn my dial here on the front to two and uh, press press play and it will it will stop the disc it'll chuck the disc back in move it over ever so slightly to disc number two grab disc number two Now disc number two will start to play. I'll get my FBI warning, I'm sure. There we go. And the same with disc number three. If I wanted to play disc number three, I could just switch it to disc three and press play. And it will stop disc number two. Chuck disc number two back into the carousel. Move to disc three. Load disc number three. And then we get disc number three playing. So this unit is now fixed. And I can. Uh, send it on its way. I, I really wish the guy that gave me this thing to fix didn't want it back because this would be going into my collection. I'd love to have the 400 disc. I wouldn't use it as a, a DVD player myself. I would only be using it as a CD player. Uh, but I would still would love to have the 400 disc. Or it's a, this is a neat, this is a really neat piece of equipment here. I don't want to show that for more than a few seconds otherwise we'll have some problems. But anyway, uh, that's the, that was the problem. As I said before, it was just the LED was bad here and the adjustment was out. Hope you enjoyed this informative video and we will see you in the next one. Bye for now.